Welcome back to part two of module six, lesson three, one step subtraction equations. We're going to start this off with one of the learned episodes and we're all going to watch a video together about using bar diagrams to solve one step subtraction equations. Use bar diagrams to solve one step subtraction equations. Use a bar diagram to solve x minus 15 equals 11. Draw a bar to represent the total. The total length of the diagram represents the original amount, x. Label the bar to show the original amount. Divide the bar into two sections to show the known values, 15 and 11. Work backward to solve the equation. Write the equation as an addition sentence and solve. 15 plus 11 equals 26. That means x equals 26. Let's try another. Use a bar diagram to solve x minus 32 equals 14. The total length of the diagram represents the original amount, x. Label the bar to show the original amount. Divide the bar into two sections to show the known values, 32 and 14. Work backward to solve the equation. Write the equation as an addition sentence and solve. 32 plus 14 equals 46. That means x equals 46. <clears throat> well, I can see some value to that. For sure, definitely gives you, once again, a great visual representation of how to solve these problems, and it's a good thing to know. However, unless the instructions on your homework specifically tells you to use this method, I'm still going to want you all to be using the method where we're solving it algebraically. Now we're going to learn how to do it algebraically using the addition property of inequality. In words, it says, if you add the same number to each side of an equation, the two sides are going to remain equal. We can look at that using numbers to say 10, if 10 equal 10, and you added 3 to both sides here and here, well, then you get 13 on both sides. It stays equal. If you had n minus 6 is equal to 7, and you added 6 to both sides, well, then those 6s would zero out, and you'd get n is equal to 13. Once again, both sides would still be equal. So let's look at this equation here. We have 32 is equal to x minus 7. The final goal of any equation, isolate your variable. What's your variable? It's x. Who's his friend? His friend is 7. And what is 7 doing to x? It is subtracting it. So what's the opposite of minus 7? Well, that is going to be to add 7 to both sides of the equal sign, just like you see here. Now on your paper, I would encourage you to draw a line through those sevens there to indicate that they have been zeroed out. Remember, we don't use the word cancel lest a high school math teacher's head explode all over you. And then from there, on the right hand side, all you have left is x. And on the left hand side, 32 plus 7, that's going to equal to 39. And check your answer. And it checks. So from there you could say that the solution to that equation is x is equal to 39. It really is that simple. That's all there is to showing your work. I will need to see some good supporting work like that on your homework tonight though. Now it's going to be your turn. I want you to solve this equation using big kid algebraic math. Just coming up with an answer is not good enough. You're going to have to isolate your variable doing the both operation on both sides, and this time we're using the addition property of an equation. Get busy. All right, my turn. Now I'm going to solve it two different ways, just like I've done before on these. Whoops, need to take and put a line here to separate the ways. The first way, using the vertical method. And for this problem, that's a really good way to do it. So all I'm going to do is take and add the opposite of this, which is 273 to both sides, plus 273 over here. When I do that, these numbers zero each other out. You can even put a big zero there if it makes you feel better, leaving nothing but t is equal to, and over here, I'm going to do 4, a 12, 
and another 4, so the final answer is going to be t is equal to 400 set 24. Over here, I'm going to work at this, the same problem, only now I'm going to use a horizontal method, which isn't as pretty for when you're working with these, but when you're working with fractions, you really want that. So I have t minus 273 plus 273, actually let me do that in red so you all can see where, where the different part is, plus 273, go back to my blue, equals 151, and then back to red, plus 273. And you can see there that the blue part, that's just your original equation. The red part is the only thing that's different, and I'm doing the same exact thing on both sides of the equation. Now, just like last time, these are going to zero each other out, so we're going to put a line through them, and then we're going to say t is equal to, add them up, you're going to get the same 424 that you got the other way. Jump back over here, test our answer, 424, and check, and the answer checks. Super easy, super neat. You can use either one of those methods to show your work, but you have to show one or the other of them, or I can't give you credit for doing it. The next problem the textbook gives us has fractions and mixed numbers involved. And they're going to probably work at vertical just like they did last time in lesson two. And I'm going to show it to you vertical and it's not going to be real pretty. Then you and I are all going to go back and we're going to rework it horizontal and you're going to see why it just makes more sense to work these horizontally. So let's move through the steps. Final goal of any equation is to isolate the variable. Your variable is m. His friend is 13 and 2 thirds. 13 and 2 thirds is subtracting itself from m, so we're going to add 13 and 2 thirds to both sides. Oh, wait, nope. First thing they did is found the least common denominator. Now nope, that makes sense. And from there, we're going to add 13 and 2 thirds, also known as 13 and 4 sixths, to both sides. And while it's efficient to do it this way, it's scary. I mean, look at fractions and mixed numbers on top of fractions and mixed numbers, and no, it just doesn't work good. So we're going to take and zero these out right here by putting a line through them. And when you're all said and done with that, well, let's see, that one would end up being, I have 13 plus 2, that is going to end up being 7. And then in the fraction side of it, I have 1 6 plus 4 6. That's going to end up being 5, 6. So this one ended up adding very nicely. We came up with a, com with a um, fraction that's not an improper fraction for the final answer. Check it. Uh-oh. What did I do wrong? Dang it. Why did I say 7? I have no idea. That is not 7. That should be 15 right there. So what happens when Mr. Reach talks and doesn't pay attention to what he's doing? So let's try that again and check. And now I get the happy place. Once again, it is your turn. This one's pretty simple. It involves decimals instead of fractions and mixed numbers, so it shouldn't be too hard. And I'd probably look at doing this one vertically because we can align your decimals that way. Solve the problem. Once again, the final goal of an equation is to isolate the variable. Our variable is g. His friend is 9 and 1 tenth, and 9 and 1 tenth is subtracting itself from g. So how am I going to make 9 and 1 tenth go away? by using the addition property of an equation and adding 9 and 1 tenth to both sides and it's going to look like this because I'm going to do it vertically just because it's so easy to do decimals vertically. I added 9 and 1 tenth on the right, I'm going to add 9 and 1 tenth on the left and I'm going to go ahead and annex in a zero there on the left as well. These 9 and 1 tenths, they just zeroed each other out leaving g all by its little lonesome and on this side I'm going to have an, a 9 we're adding here I'm going to have a 1, a decimal, and then this one is going to become 54. So the answer is going to be 54 and 19 hundredths. Jump over here, type in our answer, 54 and 19 hundredths. We're going to check, and it checks. Easy math. Let's do one apply problem, then we'll call it quits. Tyson had 382, $302.87 in a savings account after he withdrew money to go shopping. So this is what was left after he decided that he was going to go shopping and he took out a chunk of money to go shopping. He spent the amount shown, that's these amounts down here, and after that he had $18.25 left and we want to use an equation to find out how much money 
Tyson originally had in his savings account. And this one's going to be a little bit tricky, so I'm going to show you how it works. First thing we're going to do is not worry a lick about that $302. That $302 is nothing but trouble for me right now. And instead, I'm going to work on finding out how much he had in his savings account, or how much he withdrew from the savings account. So I'm going to take and do a W for withdrawal, and he withdrew a chunk of money. From that chunk of money he had, he spent $42.79, and he spent another $95.21, and he spent another $23.75. And how much did he have left? He had $18.25 left. So the first thing we're going to have to do is add up all those negatives. Because signs are the same, we're going to find the sum. So I have a negative $42.91, a negative $95.21. Oh, that's $42.79. That would have got me in a heap of trouble there. So this one here is $42.79. $95.21, $92.25. So when we add all those up, sign from a larger number going for the answer, that's going to give me a 5, carry the 1, that's going to be an 8, 15, 17, decimal comes down, carry the 1, that's going to end up giving me a, a, a 11, carry the 1, that's going to be a 14, 15, 16, so he had $116 that he spent, so W minus $161, not 16, 75 cents and that ended up equaling $18.25. Now we get to use the addition property of an equality to isolate the variable. All right, to do that, I'm going to take and add the friend $161.75 to both sides. And when I do that, these are going to zero out, leaving W, the amount he withdrew, is going to be equal to, add these up, that's going to become a 10, carry the 1, that's going to become a 10, carry the 1 again, decimal comes down, that's going to become a 10, carry the 1 again, that will end up being a 7, and a 1. So he withdrew, let's go ahead and circle the whole thing there, $170. But that is not what it wanted to find out. It wanted to find out how much money did he have in his savings account before he went shopping. So to find that out, I'm going to take the $302 and the 87 cents. I'm going to add to that the $170 that he withdrew. And now we're going to take and see we have a seven, an eight, a decimal, a two, a seven, and a four. He had $472 and 87 cents that he started off with. Come down here, I had, was it 482? Nope, 472. And 87, yep, 472 dollars, 87 cents. Whoa, what did I do wrong? I found my mistake. I didn't carry something here properly because what I should have had right here was 180, and that's gonna change everything. So let me take and erase that. We're going to take and put in a 180 there, and that means that I would have had a 180 there that's being added, which means I'd have a 482.87 here. Now let's go back and try that new number, $482.87, and that's a happy sound. We're going to stop here and get started on your homework assignment. Make sure that you were giving me good, high-quality supporting work so I can give you good, high-quality grades on your homework. I'll see you tomorrow.